the Phoenix, Arizona housing market is a little weird. So if you're thinking about making a move to Arizona, you might want to pay attention to this video, give you some insight of what we're actually seeing here with boots on the ground, not just what mainstream media is portraying. Like many places, the market went crazy. It was super unaffordable and then it dipped and a lot of people were talking about how Phoenix was falling out. Well, actually we saw an increase for five, six months in a row and that's what we have been seeing. But lately, that has not been the case. Everything was pointing towards a seller's market and we're still seeing multiple offers, but we're starting to see a noticeable, at least I am and I'm seeing with clients, talking to colleagues, some noticeable changes. And I'm gonna show you here on the chart. Now this is the Cromford uh, Market Index, the Cromford Report. They put out some really good data. So first thing is active listings. We're still down. Now this shows the total active listings when it comes to single family detached homes, your typical standalone house. We're just over 9,000. Now in the fall, early fall of 2022, we were above 17,000, um, but we've been hovering just below 9,000 and now we're just a little bit above. So that is a number I like to pay attention to to see what's going on. So we still have an inventory shortage but demand is also down. Demand is down, supply is down, and home affordability, well, it just isn't there because of a lot of factors, and I'm gonna get into that here in this video. But if you look here, so looking at this chart, the red is not good for sellers. Uh, when it comes to like pending listings are down from last month and last quarter, um, and last year, and the year before, uh, listings under contract are also down, uh, sales per month also down, and sales per year are also down. Now that goes beyond just your typical seller. Also a lot of the investment buyers, your iBuyers, buyers, your hedge funds, place like Open Door, they have significantly pulled back. Blackstone isn't buying homes like they were before. So take that into some consideration with these numbers because they did make up a lot of, you know, a lot of the market here. And then we keep on going and we look at, you know, the days on market. So that actually improved but month supply of inventory has gone up slightly. Still not enough inventory, but it is trending upward. And then if we keep looking, uh, listing success rate, 80% is still really good, but it has fallen some. So again, a number I pay attention to. Now a lot of these are leading and lagging indicators, but it's nice to inspect what you expect, see what is going on. And then the average monthly sales price, that fell from last month, still above. Now if you look at last year, that was at 569. Now, our market peaked in 2022 right around $600,000 for an average home sale. And the median was just around five. Now, currently the median is 440 and the average is 565. Still relatively uh, expensive considering from what it was two years ago and beyond. And if we look at the Cromford Market Index, it is at 162 and that you know has gone up from last quarter, um, but down from last month. Now, 100 is balanced above as a seller's market. So on paper, a lot of seller's markets. However, what we're actually seeing is if a home is not priced right in a very, you know, that makes it in demand, it is sitting and it is not selling and they're having to chase the market. So let's say you're buying a home for the medium price of 440, today's market and today's rates, which are 6.89%. Now, if you've paid any attention, rates have been a little volatile. They were up last week and part of this week to above seven, and that really put the brakes on things. But if you're buying for 440, you're putting 20% down today's rate and you have perfect credit, your payment is going to be around $2,600 per month. Now, if we look at what that was two years ago, and the median price was 400,000, and your interest rate was 3.1%. Uh, so same house, going from 2,600 down to 1,649, almost $1,000 more per month to buy the same home. Now, again, this is for the median, with the average being you know around 565, and we're gonna look at what it is for today's numbers, 6.89. So putting 20% down, your payment is 32.57 for average. So let's say you're buying the average house, 32.57, and we're gonna use the 28% rule. This is how much you would have to make to be able to afford that house. 11,632 per month times 12, 
139,585 needs to be your gross income to buy average. Well, if you're buying median home price, 2,600, 5.28, 9,285 per month gross times 12, around $111,000, $112,000 is what you need to make gross to buy the median home price. I know some wages have increased, but a lot of people, that is simply not the case. So home affordability is becoming harder and harder for a lot of people. And that's why we're seeing more of these rental communities enter and being built by developers because they know people can't afford to buy, but they can afford to rent. So what do you think happens with the market? I mean, I know a lot of people think, keep saying it's gonna crash and eventually you would, you would think prices would pull back. But as they continue to fight inflation and they continue to raise rates and mess around there, it's making home, home affordability less and less of a thing. But that's what we're seeing right here. So are people still moving here? Yes. Would I buy a house here? Well, it depends. Now, if I already owned a home here that I liked, that I had you know, an under 4% rate, which over 60% of homeowners do, I probably want it. But if I was moving here and I had no choice, well then I would want to look for the best possible way to structure that purchase, you know, whether it be uh, if I'm buying a new home, getting a credit from the builder, or if I'm buying a resale and getting an incentive, uh, a credit from the seller to buy that rate down to at least help with the affordability. Because right now we simply don't have enough homes and if they're priced right, they are selling. So that is where we're at. Let me know what you think. We'll continue to keep an eye on this. And if you're looking to make the move, reach out. All my contact info is below. Watch this video and I'll see you next time.